Okay, here's a review on functions and how they work. If you want to, you can always look up Insane Clown Posse, the song Miracles. They talk about magnets or learn about gathering of juggalos, which is the ICP fans. Functions. You've got basic functions defined from t equals negative infinity to zero to positive infinity. Constant sigma is a function of time. It's a constant. It's always three or zero. The slope's always zero. It's flat. The simple function f of t equals t is time dependent. At time t equals negative infinity, it goes down to negative infinity. At zero, it's zero. At infinity, it's infinity. So it's just a line of slope one. The exponential function with a positive value for a starts when negative values of t at infinity. At t equals zero, you get e to the zero, which is one. And then you, as you get larger values of t, assuming a is positive, you go towards zero. And we defined a heavy side step function that goes from zero to one at time zero. So these are different elementary, very basic functions. When you multiply functions, like if we want to multiply a constant times t times a step, those are three different functions. You're multiplying, not adding. So you can draw those out and multiply them spot by spot, like three times a negative number times zero is zero. Three times zero times one is zero. Three times one times one is three. So basically you can make a table if you want to for function one, the constant, function two, the time, and function three, the step, and function where it's a product, all those things. We do this because there are, well, in Laplace domain, we want to have everything having a value of zero before time t equals zero. So our basic functions for Laplace are usually products of other functions. If you want to time delay things, that's one of the other advantages to writing it out in form of a single term that's a product of different things. When you see a t value, you just shift that by alpha if you want to time delay something. So for an example where you have e to the minus a t minus alpha, you shift the t in the e to the a t, and you shift the t in the heavy side step. So again, you have a product. You have a size 4 exponential, so it's exponential side multiplied by size 4, and a step that turns on at time 2. This t minus 2 and this t minus 2 match. If they don't match, you're going to have a hard time figuring out what that function is, I think. But this is nice. You have this basic function. We size it, and we shift the time value. Those are the two parameters to move to make the function bigger in the positive and negative direction, and then move it from 0 to some future value. So you can, again, make a table. The constant, the exponential, which is real big, e to the negative a times negative 4 is like a large number, e to the positive 4a. At e to the a t, where t is 0, that's just 1. That's where we usually say it turns on, and that function starts. And then that e to the minus a t, as t gets bigger, if a is positive, it's going to get smaller and smaller. e to the minus a t gets smaller and smaller and decays away. All right, when you multiply those together, you get zero until the function starts. And for the exponential, we said it goes to one, e to the zero goes to one. But if we scale it by four, we get four times e to the zero, four times e to the minus a, four times e to the minus three, two a. So it decays away. Again, we're doing this because we want to get functions we can find Laplace of or we know the Laplace over. So a step function, a basic step, that goes from zero to one and times zero is one of rest. That's called the heavy side. We can throw in a shift, a time shift. If we move that into the future, like time five, we shift the t minus alpha, say t equals, when t equals five, if this is, if this is five minus five, that's zero. And we said whatever's inside the parentheses for the heavy side is when it switches from zero to one. So when that goes to zero, when t minus alpha goes to zero, that's when you see the switch. When it's negative, it's zero. When it's zero or positive, it's one. So we don't have to re-derive this. We know it's a step, which is 1 over s for Laplace domain. The time delay is e to the minus alpha s, whatever that shift is. So it just moves in the future. So we just multiply the Laplace domain by that time shift to get the overall Laplace of that function. For a ramp, it's 1 over s squared times a slope. And it's 1 over s squared times e to the minus alpha s if you shift that ramp into the future. Exponentials, 1 over s plus a. And again, the exponential jumps from 0 to 1 at time 0, the way we've defined it. 
This is the normal definition. This is in, in terms of a product of the size, in this case, one, e to the minus at times the switch or the heavy side function that goes from zero to one. So that's the function. When we take the loss, we're not saying, oh, it's an exponential and a step. It's the product of, product of those together that makes the shark fin that we do know Laplace of. You don't Laplace this times that. We, we do Laplace's of basic Laplace function plus another basic Laplace function, like ramp plus delayed ramp, exponential plus step, exponential plus delayed, exponential plus whatever. So the functions we know are all in this form that have zero and then jump and then come back. Like a time shift with exponential. When you shift the t value and the t value by alpha, that means that exponential doesn't start, doesn't jump up from zero to one until t minus alpha is equal to zero. And at that point in time, you want the exponential to be zero. That's why it's t minus alpha here too. So it, if it's, again, if alpha is 10, when t equals 10, this step turns on. So it goes from zero to one and this t minus alpha if alpha is 10 and t equals 10, that e to the zero goes to one. And then it starts decaying away for positive a. So you have the one over s plus a and then the time shift operator there. Now, the whole point of doing this is because we want to get sums of basic functions, basic functions we know the Laplace of. So in this case, we have a ramp of size three, starting at time zero, and a ramp of slope negative three, which starts at time two. So we shifted the t value by two, and we shifted the step that turns on that ramp at, by two. We scaled this one by three, and we scaled this function by negative three. So we write out the time values, the first function, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. The negative three ramp is 0, 0, 0, 0, but it doesn't even start till two, because at time t equals two, t equals two, that means this guy's zero. At t equals two, this guy's just switched to one. So that's where he goes to zero. But when t equals 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, this guy will be positive, so that heavy side is turned to 1. So we get a negative 3, 6, negative 9. And when we add them row by row, 0 plus 0 is 0. 3 plus 0 is 3. 6 plus 0 is 6. 9 plus negative 3 is 6. So it basically stays the same as illustrated here. Ramp of size 3, slope 3 at 0. Ramp of negative 2. Ramp of negative three starting at time two. Add those together point by point. During this point, it's zero plus zero. Zero plus ramp. Ramp up plus ramp down on the same slope. They're basically canceling each other out. This T gets a little bit bigger. This one goes up. This T gets a little bigger. This one goes down. And then they cancel off at the same rate. So slope of zero to slope of three to slope of zero. Anytime there's a change in the constant slope like that, you're probably adding a ramp. I forgot this one slide. Uh, this is why we're doing all this sum of functions, because when you take a Laplace transform, you're taking basically a fancy integral of the function. And when you have a sum of two functions, you can split the integral into two different integrals. That's why we don't have to redo the Laplace transform integration every time. If it's a step plus an exponential, we can just write down the Laplace of a step and the Laplace of an exponential. We're also using the rule for constants. When you remember back integration, if you have a constant times a function, you're integrating that constant times a function, the constant can come outside the integral. So the size, which is just a, a multiple constant, can pull out. So a step of size 10, the 10 can come out, and we know the Laplace of a step. Easy. When you add to that step an exponential or a ramp, of size four or slope four, the constant can come out and you know the Laplace of a step or a ramp because we know that Laplace because the way integrals work with adding functions and multiplying, multiplying by a constant. All right, simultaneous functions. This is another one where you're adding two functions together. This is often tricky. Here, we're talking about a step of size two and an exponential size three, both starting at zero. So they both have a jump. A step jumps because of size 2 is from 0 to 2, and this exponential, when you scale it by 3, jumps from 0 to 3. So when we add that point by point by point, 0 plus 0 is 0. 2, at time 0, it's 2 plus 3, which is 5. So this system jumps up to 5, and then it decays away. Out here towards infinity, this constant, 2 times 
t of like infinity is two because it's always constant. Out here, the exponential goes down to zero. So the exponential function starts at three and goes to zero. The step starts at two and goes to two. So the overall function goes to two plus three, five, the sum of those two and decays down to two where only the step remains. Okay. You get our other combinations. The more common expression of this is when you have two, a lot of times you have two functions added together that are the same size, but just different directions. So like if you're filling a tank, the response might be expressed as a sum of a size 10 step and a size negative 10 exponential. When you add those two functions together, they're both zero and at time zero, because it's positive and positive and positive 10 and negative 10, it's still zero. But as the exponential approaches zero, all you're left with is the step and you get the sum that looks like a tank filling. The main thing here is to remember, look at the exponential and sometimes they're curved like the exponential is curving towards zero up. In the previous example, the exponential started at a positive number and curved down. So if it's a positive size exponential, it's curving like our normal exponential from one down to zero. If it's a negative one, it's curving like it's filling up. It's going down and then coming back up. So you can have any combination of step of different sizes, exponential of different sizes, positive and negative combinations of these two guys slide all over the place. And that's just showing it again.